in conversation with John Amici, OBE Activity Alliance Vice President. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager for Activity Alliance, and I'm delighted to be joined by our Vice President, John Amici, today. John is a respected organisational psychologist and founder of APS. Uh, John and I have been friends for 20 years, uh, and we've obviously caught up quite a lot during that time, but this year we haven't. So I have really missed you. Um, and I can't wait that, that we can when we can actually get back together again. Um, it's been an interesting 12 months, John. How's your year been? It's been incredibly hectic. I have spent more time than I care to in front of this exact camera and in this exact seat. Um, uh, on the other, I, you know, on the other hand, I, I I'm an introvert, and so not being around people is not as bad i think for me as for other people who and and the other part is 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 to that i don't rely on anybody else for for my life to feel really quite good and so that that level of independence has meant that i've been able to operate really really well during the pandemic deliver most of my work through a screen uh, i'm super privileged in that i have space outside in my own place here in central london and uh, I know that's that's in the suburbs. It's quite common, but but for lots of people, I think that can make you a little more crazy. The fact that the room that you work in is the room that you sleep in, or the room that you eat your dinner in, and it just can make you absolutely nuts. And I've not had any of that. I've got this this space here, and then I can leave this space, and I'm not at work anymore. Yeah. So it's good. It's it's been a good year for me, but. Uh, y- you know what I have been, because of the communications I've had with some of the videos I've done, what I've really understood well is how it's not just sad, but how ab- abjectly miserable a huge number of people have been and how it's not that trite kind of, oh, I can't wait to get back to a pub kind of experience. It's I, I, I must I must have some more human connection. What impact does social isolation have on people? John, you and I have known each other for coming up to 20 years now. I can't believe it. (laughs) And I miss you more than ever this year because I can't, I can't just book you in because we can't get out there and I can't come to London and I can't just see you and hug you. So it's been a year where that social isolation and loneliness, as you've just spoken about, has really hit a lot of people. And, you know, what impact does that have on everybody? Uh, I think people, so, I, you know, I, I always give the proper scientist disclaimer in that that my research area has never been loneliness. But so, but obviously over the last few months, it's been part of the work that we're doing. What people don't realize is that loneliness has a physical toll. It, it there are people who use analogies like it's like smoking x number of cigarettes and i I always think that that's a poor comparator but it really does take a physical toll on you and not just because you do less when you you want around other people in terms of movement but just because it it shows you how closely tied our mental well-being and our physical well-being are i don't know how other people have felt watching this but i have felt more aches and pains in the midst of this because i've had more time to kind of live inside my body and think about it i've had a a, a sense that the kind of casual contact that that we love to have with each other the idea that we would do you know flyby catch-ups oh you just happen to be walking through i remember when i just happened to be walking when 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 the office was in central uh, manchester just happened to be walking by and i just happened to be walking by and you just have that and everybody knows it's not going to be a ding dong. It's not going to be the, the whole day, but it's just going to be this half an hour. And I think that kind of episodic, casual contact, the fact that everything has to be scheduled, has made people very lonely. And loneliness is affecting people's mental health. It's affecting their physical well-being. And, and I think it's it's making it so that when we go back to, I, I'm I'm always hesitant to call it normal because I think things aren't going to be the same. But when we go back to seeing people again, I think people will feel a bit of interpersonal rust. The idea that they haven't been around people. So even people they're really familiar with, they'll have that first big hug and then it'll be like, 
Mm. It's a bit awkward. So, yeah, there's going to be some ramifications. How do we turn the negativity we've all experienced into positivity? That loss of routine, a loss of jobs, that you know, loss of life has really hit people hard in the last 12 months. And turning that negativity into positivity is quite tricky. Um, and is that, does that come through habit? Does that come from a little bit at a, a time? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, that, that's Sarah. That's a tough one. I'm not sure we can necessarily just turn it into positivity. I always think that, and I know that you know when we've talked about it. Other people can be a bit crass, right? It's over. Go on, get out there. But it, that's not how it works. We've been defined by loss. I think you're, you're so accurate. This this pandemic has been defined by loss. Uh, for some people it, it's a, a loss of, of connection for some people it's a loss of mobility for some people it's actual loss of colleagues and friends loved ones for some people it's loss of work there's so much loss out there that we have to go through a bereavement phase we have we're allowed to and, and the thing is while you're in lockdown you can't go through bereavement because you're still in it you're still in that trauma so I think people need to give themselves a break and understand that as we come out of this, you might feel more timid, more concerned, more worried, more startled by the world than you ever had before. But know that it hasn't become more frightening. It just feels it. But if it feels it, that's fine. But don't let that be a reason that you stay locked down. Fear is 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 remarkable really, the way it plays in our mind. You hear someone sneeze nowadays, it has an entirely different connotation. I was watching a video the other day where somebody was blowing on a, a birthday cake and I was like, Ugh. people did that, remember that? People blew on their birthday cake and then you ate it. I don't think we'll be doing that anymore. I don't think we'll be blowing candles off them. So fear is, has, has shaped the way we think about things. I just hope people realize that Life can be better. It can be better and different. You might have to try some new solutions. Don't don't dwell in that fear. Don't sit in your in, in your in your house. Don't sit there thinking that everything is the same out there and and it's all going to be frightening. You're going to have to take a chance. And I think the best thing to do is to do it with somebody see if you can find that's part of I mean <clears throat> you know me I often bag on teams and sports teams but one of the best things about them is you often find a group of people there who lift you they lift you up the ones that nag you in the morning I know you're thinking about not showing up today <laughs> that's what you need find some other people who can help drive your purpose and make the fear a little less frightening what can leaders in sport do to rebuild confidence so Activity Alliance obviously is the leading voice for disabled people in sport and activity. And, and we work with so many organisations and have done in the last 12 months to just try and encourage that inclusion and support them on that journey to do better. Um, what can you know the leaders in sport and the workforce in sport <clears throat> do to rebuild confidence? In workplaces, we have this idea of what talent looks like. And it doesn't look disabled. It often doesn't look like a woman. It often doesn't look like a black person. And so there's entire groups that 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 get a palpable sense that they don't belong. And in sport, I think it's even more acute because whether you're a trainer or whether you've got an idea in your head as you go through your training of who you're going to work with, almost this weird idea that the only people who should work with people who have disabilities are people who've trained in disabilities, like people with disabilities are people. The biggest thing we could do is just let's redefine who our clients are, who our customers are. Help them understand it's this wide breadth of people who want to come and experience the, the the benefits of movement. How can we overcome our individual fears to get out and be active again? Rebuilding that confidence and trust is going to take time. Um, you know, nobody, I don't think any disabled person out there thinks it's going to happen overnight. Um, but I guess as a disabled person myself, I'd, 
I'd like to think that, you know, somebody in sport and activity is really thinking about my fears and my my trust issues perhaps right now um, and really wants me to get out and get active as well. Um, and it, it, I guess we, we use the word journey a lot in, in, in a lot of stuff. Um, and I guess for everybody, it's going to be a bit of a, a trial in terms of getting people back out again. I, I, I worry less about people getting back out there again. I know people are going to be a bit scared and I know that's going to mean that initially there's going to be some hesitation. I think once the fear dissipates and people have managed to process it after lockdown and they've decided they're not going to lock themselves down, I think then the actual impediment exists, which is the idea, does my gym, club, group, movement, exercise space want me? And and that's not on people with disabilities. That's that's not on that's not on you to, to make it so that a gym wants it's on the gym to say actually yes you are welcome here and and yes it's our responsibility to make sure that we've got uh, trainers or, or or whoever's in there that understand how to make this work i i think we need to lay the responsibility so for the the people watching who are people who are looking to get back to sport I, I know that it won't be immediate i know you'll have worries and concerns and that's legitimate but just don't lock yourself down after this just give yourself time to process and know that 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 there there is going to be an opportunity to get back out there but then the other responsibility while all this processing is this justifiable processing is going on the the responsibility is on these organizations these gyms these sporting entities to make sure that they make it so clear that everyone is welcome